will cook.
So it's suffice to say that it's, a, it's the most appropriate plant uh, to be on a ring celebrating higher education. Now if you flip your ring to the right side. We've already talked about the acanthus plant, which is represented there as well. But lower down is the mask rider, which again is one of our well-known symbols that you probably don't know, need to, a lot of explanation about, but again, you might not know some of the history uh, behind that. Uh, a few years ago, well, for the, those students who are here now, the mask rider used to run full speed down the field, just like it does at the beginning of the game, every time Texas Tech would score a field goal or a touchdown. Um, but some incidents, uh, some accidents happened, and so they kind of, uh, Pulled that back a little bit and said, you know, this, they would do it at the beginning of the game and would just trot around the field like they do now. So, um, it's this kind of history was happening here recently. But in 1936, the same year that Arsh Lam uh, created the Saddle Tramps, which is a male spirit organization, uh, a ghost rider appeared at a home game against the Arizona State Lumberjacks. Uh, he rode in wearing a scarlet and black cape. Uh, he was riding a Palomino, circled the field a couple times, took off, just to you know, the astonishment of the crowd. It wasn't until 1954, when Tech was in the Gator Bowl, that uh, Joe Kirk Fulton, who was our first mask rider, rode into the stadium with the cape and mask on a borrowed black horse, uh, and again, to the utter astonishment of the crowd. Uh, the Office of the football team was inspired, but they went on to beat Auburn 35-13 in the Gator Bowl. And so the tradition was fixed. To this day, Tech retains the scarlet and black cape mask rider on a black horse, even if that horse and rider had been reined in over the years. Nothing? Nothing at all? Rain in? Horse rain? rain. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Um, below the mass rider, excuse me, above the mass rider, uh, is the administration building tower that we talked about earlier. Uh, again, Paul Horn uh, took a, back, a very active role as the first president, not only in the design of the curriculum and the academics here, but of, of our campus. Uh, and he, along with William Watkin, uh, chose to model our campus after the Spanish Renaissance universities uh, in and around Madrid, Spain. Uh, the Spanish Renaissance architecture with the, the Greek windows and the columns and the Roman arches is our basic design that you see every day and, and visitors continue to rave about the inspiring setting of our campus. The East Tower of the administration building is the one that's on your ring. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the West Tower. It's got 43 hand-cast bells in the carillon, uh, which entertain us daily with its, its music. Uh, but again, the East Tower is the one that's on your ring uh, that you're looking at now. Uh, the uh, East Tower contains the two victory bells. You know, I'm sure know uh, very well. The first one is 900 pounds, and the smaller one is 300 pounds. Uh, these victory bells ring to signify athletic victories and, uh, and really momentous occasions, such as the ceremony tonight. Uh, following our time here, the victory bells will ring one time for each of you who have gone through the ceremony tonight. So it's a pretty cool thing to have the victory bells. So make sure you listen for that as you walk out here tonight. Turn to the bottom of the ring. That's pretty easy. There are uh, two double T's that are tied together with a decorative band. And then if you look inside the ring, uh, next is the inscription that's, uh, that's from our alma mater, the Matador song, which says, Strive for Honor. That's in the mold for every ring. And we, uh, you know, it's a saying that we always think should be thinking of as graduate of Texas Tech, uh, so it's fitting it's on the inside of your ring. Uh, the final thing on the inside of the inscription is uh, the, the one you chose to personalize your ring, either your name, your initials, uh, your graduation year, whatever you chose to do, is in there. And not only is it a personal inscription for you, it's also the identifier of the ring. So Balfour and the Alumni Association both have records of what, uh, what you had in your ring. That's how we keep track of it. So in case you ever lose it, I'm sure the honest person will find it, return it to either Balfour or the Alumni Association, and we'll be able to match it up with you. And actually, we've had quite a few that have, that have been returned to their owners after being lost. So in summary, we've taken a geographical and historical tour of your ring. And uh, hopefully now that you know some of the history and sometimes controversies behind the, the, the symbols that we put on there, the ring and those symbols will mean even more to you. Uh, when you think about it, your ring really encapsulates what it means to be a Texas Tech graduate and a Red Raider, and will forever serve to remind you um, of your academic accomplishments and the pride you have in your alma mater. So, with that being said, I've made you wait long enough. Why don't you go ahead and put your ring on, with the double T facing in towards you. And again, when you get to graduation and they ask you to move your task, you'll be able to turn your ring around, the double T facing outward, to show everyone that you are indeed a Red Raider graduate. So again, congratulations and good luck.